Saturday, Labor Day weekend. There's my new truck. Well, actually, I've had it for a year. And it's broke already. Just drove it home last night. Well, here's my new truck. The idea is to give this to the wife to drive. Ain't a bad old truck. It was wrecked. Bought some uh, used parts from the junkyard. I've got to paint it. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint it this color. I was thinking semi gloss black, maybe. But it's got a dent almost everywhere, so pretty much got to paint the whole truck anyway. And on the way home last night, transmission started puking fluid, so got to figure that out. Well, here's a bad sign. I think my leak came from right there. Looks like the cooler's broken a radiator, pumping transmission fluid into the coolant system. That's not cool. Well, that fills the shop up, don't it? Here, I got this last weekend. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But I'm the proud owner of a seized up Ford flathead and a transmission and a bunch of extra carburetors and stuff. Hmm. This isn't too good. Look at that goop coming out of the radiator. It's barely running. It's so thick. And worse than that. That's the transmission filter. Mmm, not good, not good. Guess I better see what's in the oil pan. Well, just got the transmission pan off. Looks like we were running the same mix in the coolant system and the transmission. I got the new radiator installed. That wasn't too bad. I'm going to flush the coolant system with uh, laundry deter or dish soap detergent. That's what Caterpillar does whenever uh, they have problems with injectors and diesel fuel gets in the engine coolant. So I'm going to give that a try. But I'm still a little worried about my transmission. Most of the dirt you see there came off a rag I used to wipe it around a little bit. But this little magnet right here is what I would consider to be normal accumulation being that it's got a hundred and twenty thousand miles or 115 or whatever it is I found the little plug from the dipstick where they push the dipstick through from the factory and it drops the little plug in the transmission into the bottom of the hole so obvious in the bottom of the pan so obviously this uh, who has never been changed there's no other accumulation in the pan. I just got to figure out how to flush that rest of that gook out of the transmission. They say it holds 17 quarts total, and I think you only get five or something out of the pan. So that means there's 12 more quarts of pink goo in there somewhere. I'm gonna have to figure a method to flush that. I'm a little bummed. I don't want to buy a transmission for that pile of junk this is me hoping for the best this is what was in my transmission uh, I'm still hoping for the best well I told you something wrong in the last video I thought that little white plastic thing I found was what went in the dipstick but it is not I actually went on the end of one of those solenoids so I put that back up in there and my plan is to put this pan back on after a ton of research online I'm still almost as confused as when I started but 
my plan is I'm going to put this pan back on. I'm going to leave one lot, the pressure side of the cooler disconnected. I'm going to flush it into a bucket. Run about 20 quarts through it. And hopefully that flushes it. I read somewhere that this transmission has a thermostatically controlled bypass on it which directs 90% of the transmission fluid to the cooler until it reaches 165 degrees. So my plan is I'm going to flush all I can. I still got to flush the coolant system. And then I'm going to fire the thing up, get it up to operating temperature, and flush the transmission again. I've also read where the transmission is probably going to fail because the glycol disintegrates the adhesive that holds the uh, clutch material on the clutch discs. Well, I'm getting ready to find out if it will or it won't. I don't really want to spend a ton of money on a transmission, so I'm going to give it a shot.